This is the second game between Orgeterix and the Prussian Prince. The Prussian Prince is commanding the Huns in this case, and the Burgundians are being commanded by Orgeterix of Agartha. So, have a look at the builds for the Prussian Prince. Standard stuff, 6 ste step bows, 6 noble step cataphracts, 6 UR warriors, and 1 step mounted bow. The general is a step chieftain with brace. This is in my opinion, close to the perfect Honic build. It's hard to... It's hard to make a better Honic build than this. You have the skirmish, you have the moss you need in the cavalry department, and you have the very sturdy or warriors. Now for Orgeterix, a slightly different uh, deployment being used by him. You can see that Orgeterix likes to deploy in depth, while the Prussian Prince has a more traditional line approach to deployment. And for, he has scatter shots, four scatter shots, two Germanic archers, very standard stuff from the Burgundians. Then he has two Germanic pikes. For cavalry he has six royal lancers, he has the royal Burgundian general, and he also has five Burgundian axemen. So matching up these units unit by unit, the skirmishers of of uh, Orgeterix will eat up the step bows of the Prussian prince. The cavalry of uh, the Burgundians will eat up the Noble Step Cataphracts, and the infantry of the Burgundians will eat up the Uar Warriors. Of course, battles don't happen one on one, a lot of things can happen, but just by army composition, the units of the units of um, Orgeterix are simply better than the units of the Prussian Prince. So the Prussian Prince is at a disadvantage. He's going to have to play this really, really smartly in order to be able to get him the engagements he needs to win. And there are some step cataphracts in here as well, but only one. So even more of an advantage from the the heavy shock cavalry, the Royal Lancers. 270 charge and 48 armor versus 230 charge and 50 armor. 244 health and uh, 245 health, but the the royal lancers are uh, the royal lancers are have a slight advantage against the one on one against the noble step cataphracts. But both of these units are going to get to the point where they kill a lot of uh, they ki they kill a lot of the enemy unit, and then it comes down to which player is able to support his units better. Because one on one, these fights are going to take a while, especially if the charge aren't clean, this being shock cavalry. So the Prussian Prince moving up with his step bows here. Firing on the scattershot hurlers. The scattershot hurlers are out of range. Now they are in range. Oh, I still have it on slow motion. <laughs> Sorry about that. The scattershots should start to rack up the kills fairly quickly against the Prussian Prince's uh, step bows, but the step bows got the first shots off because of the range advantage. The Prussian Prince being a bit annoying with the step mounted bows here. Using flaming on the scattershot hurlers, not uh, the best use of flaming, but I'm sure these units are meant to take on cavalry. So the scatter shots. Uh, are starting to get kills, but they're also losing a lot of men here. And the Prussian Prince moving a bit to the side. A nice bit of skirmishing to begin with here. This is good for the Prussian Prince, because he's essentially trading very cheap units for units that are more expensive. And by focusing fire like this, he's able to do fairly well against these scatter shots so very important there by the Prussian Prince uh, scatter shots are scatter shots are a, they are a bit expensive to be rallies. using them to to kill these uh, very cheap step bows especially when the step bows are able to focus fire due to having more units in range and over here the uh, the very nice nicely done there by the Prussian Prince with the step mounted in doing damage, moving around, making Orgeterix micro here on the flanks. These skirmish units are essentially... They are sort of nulling each other out. But... But the Prussian Prince got the better trade simply by having cheaper units. 
I'm trying to break these scattershot hurlers here now, which he and might be able to. Royal Lancers taking a bit of damage, nicely done there. And the Prussian Prince is going to have more of his skirmish units available for simply blocking charges, which is very, very good for him. And uh, surprisingly well, um, surprisingly good performance here by these depots, mainly due to them having the greater range and getting shots off, but also the Prussian Prince using focus fire very well. Whereas it looked like Oketerix wasn't as on point with his his focus fire as the Prussian Prince was. Using pikes here to block the uh, block the steppos from being able to to just chase away the Germanic archers, I'm sure. Now these Germanic archers are being very cheeky, moving up. And now the Prussian Prince focusing fire on the Germanic pikes, also getting some shots in on these Germanic archers, simply due to them being close and charging in with the Germanic pikes. Trying to remove the skirmishers of the Prussian Prince, which he needs to do that. Since his units are mainly shock, he really needs to do that. The Noble step, step Cataphracts are firing. Using their bows, their Precursor bows, to do a bit of damage. Not a huge amount, but here comes the engagement from the Germanic Pikes. Chasing away the, the Step bows. It's so important to get away these, these uh, small units. And the Step Mounted bows are firing. Doing damage to Burgundian Axis. And it's very clear that Orgatrix just wants to remove the skirmish screen from the Prussian Prince. Which is very important. And the Prussian Prince might get a charge here. No, he's going to turn around. Just to make these uh, units stay in range a bit longer. And doing a good job here. Moving around the pikes. With two cavalry units. Which means that he gets a charge while the pikes are down, and, and this pike unit, these Germanic pikes, are off the field in a few seconds. And they really need to, because these Royal Lancers are going to be able to get in, hit the Noble Step Cataphracts. And the Noble Step Cataphracts are going to die very quickly now. Nicely done here by the Prussian Prince, using his Step Mounted Bows to clean up a unit of Hurlers. And overall, the Prussian Prince, I think the Prussian Prince is getting uh, the better engagements, but he sort of wasted these step nobles, unless he can support, but Orgetrix is being very smart and just keeping support of his own here. Very nice charge here by the Prussian Prince, hitting both Burgundian Axis and the Royal Lancers. Nice way to use a depleted cavalry use unit. And, he can no longer fire. and he's trying to move around here with his Uars, but the Uars are going to get hit by Royal Lancers. And goodbye, UR warriors. But the Royal Lancers are going to get hit themselves by two cavalry units. And, and now the infamous Attila Clusterfrog starts to... ...starts to develop. And this is so dangerous, this Royal Lancer unit getting in and... ...and potentially could just smash into the UR warriors here. Not getting a great charge, getting stopped a bit, but he's being smart here and moving them around. But here you can see the utility of having these uh, skirmish units. They are able to stop some of the Burgundians from getting into the War Warriors. Not completely, but at least somewhat. And in this blob here, the Royal Lancers are taking a royal beating. Noble Step Cataphracts just got a charge against the Royal Lancers here. But there are quite a few unengaged Axe units here. The Axe units are not going to do well when they are charged by Uars like this, of course. And here we have General on General, the Royal Burgundian General smashing into the Step Chieftain. But there is some support here, some Noble Step Cataphracts in support. There's also Infantry support, and unless this Infantry unit is able to support over here, the Royal Burgundian General is going to die, most likely. Sending in Skirmishers here to just um, do additional damage to the Royal Lancers, because when a unit is pulling out from from combat like this and attacked in the rear, even units like these depots are going to get a 30 bonus against them and uh, the, the melee defense of the unit that is trying to pull out gets dropped to zero. So even these step bows, it's like they have a 30 bonus against large when they are fighting a unit like that. So the Prussian Prince was able to create some very nice engagements for himself here, was able to do well in the skirmish and this step mounted bow unit is invaluable now in the late game. 
Question is if he really needs it, because this is going very well for the Prussian Prince. The weakness of the Burgundian army is that it is so reliant on charges and uh, it's fairly low morale in terms of infantry, so... The Prussian Prince was able to exploit that fairly well, and here the Royal Burgundian General is just getting surrounded by the units of the Prussian Prince, and, and uh, he's going to die momentarily. Here we have the step mounted bows racking up the kills by m crashing into crashing into units, stopping them from firing, stopping them from sniping the general of the Prussian Prince. And crashing into the Burgundian Axemen. These step mounted bows are going to get a lot of kills here. Just a matter of time before the Royal Burgundian General bites the dust here. A few Burgundian Axemen units left. And now the enemy general is dead, and the morale problems of the Burgundians is probably going to mean that we see a chain route fairly soon. Especially since the Prussian Prince has free units he's able to inflict rear charge uh, penalties on. So, very nice, very nicely done here by the Prussian Prince. Orgetorix had some uh, nice moves as well, but the, the Hunnic army was able to grind down the Burgundians very nicely. And the, the Huns are considered a much weaker faction, not a top tier faction compared to the Burgundians. But the Prussian Prince was able to make it work here, and that starting skirmish was monumental. You can see the very cheap uh, step bows pay for themselves very well. And the cavalry also does a good job compared to the Royal Lancers. The Ur Warriors do a good job, but once again, a super, super close battle. They deploy about the same amount of men. Uh, but even though isolated, the Burgundian units are better. When you put those units together in army, you create very interesting options, like what the Prussian Prince did here in using his, um, his step-mounted bows. His step-mounted bows got the most kills out of all of his cavalry units. Which is a testament to how dangerous that one extra cavalry unit can be. So very nice game by uh, by the Prussian Prince and Orgetrix here. Thanks to the Prussian Prince for uh, sending it to me. Uh, check out his channel. I'm sure most of you know about his channel if you're interested in Total War. I'm going to put the link in the description anyway. Strength and honor.